What's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive and faster than a speeding bullet supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. And for today's majestic and fantastic video, we are continuing with Marvel's red, white, and blue superhero. And of course, I'm talking about Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty, issue number five. But before we get started, if you are new to the channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. That way you guys never miss out on anything that's happening on this lovely and majestic channel. And because you managed to cross over a thousand subs, let's raise the bar and go full on Super Saiyan as we try to reach 200 more subs before the end of 2022. Basically, don't be rude and don't be a silly goose. Be a freaking hero and hit that subscribe button. Thus, without further ado, let's dive into the world of Captain America Sentinel of Liberty issue number five. Our story begins at the Shadow Capital, which is the main headquarters of the Outer Circle. And amid this impromptu meeting between its members, the Outer Circle are trying to hold the revolution accountable for the role that he has played in leading Captain America to their main base. And while they're all condemning him and telling him how much he sucks and whatnot, that's when the revolution speaks up and he tells them all that he's done playing this stupid game. He's done playing by their stupid rules and he wants out. And despite whatever the Outer Circle has planned for the long term, it's not enough to influence his decision. Mofo wants out. From there, that's where we switch things over to the Earth's orbit, aboard the Freedom's Flight, which is being piloted by one of Steve's friends. And it's here where we pick up with Captain America and Bucky Barnes, who are en route towards the Shadow Capital because their mission right now is to take out the Outer Circle, for they mean to dismantle this group from the inside and out. And with Steve having been able to recruit the Redactor robot from the previous issue, Redacted is basically going to be their key inside. And like a trio of badasses, the three heroes jump out of the plane and skydive their way into the Shadow Capital, as it's shown to be cloaked in a force field to where we then see a gigantic hovering shield-shaped base. And from there, that's when we see Redacted going on an explosive rampage throughout the entire capital. However, Redacted's actions cause Bucky and Steve's covers to be blown. And from there, that's when the duo are intercepted by the towering holograms of the Outer Circle. And the members ask the heroes if they really think they collectively know the role that the Outer Circle plays. Because according to their point of view, they don't control. They seek to inspire. For they bend the world to their favor. Everything that is happening is happening because they tip the scales in order to benefit their plans. And at the end of the day, you nerds are nothing but spectators, watchers of the Sentry game. And now, with a new Sentry on the rise, the world no longer requires heroes or icons like Captain America. Therefore, the Outer Circle, being the jerks that they are, give Cap and Bucky the finger, and then they activate Order 23, which is dubbed as Captain America Must Die. And thus, that's when Steve and Bucky find themselves surrounded and attacked by the soldiers. Soldiers from nations from all across the world. Soldiers who've been made into pawns for the Outer Circle's usage. Now, a thing to keep in mind is that during this fight is the fact that Bucky is following a no-kill rule. And the reason for this is because similar to Redacted, Steve is aware that all the soldiers who are under the influence of the Outer Circle are not in control of their actual thoughts and feelings. So, yeah, basically Bucky... I know you can be a bit crazy at times, but um, can you hold that back for a bit? Because I don't want you to go full out winter soldier here. Because uh, these guys are actually good people. And if you kill them, then that's just, you know, a bad case of murder. And so, yeah, Bucky's obliging Steve's request. However, as the endless waves of soldiers are making ground, Captain America finds himself at gunpoint by a soldier. But it's clear that this soldier is reluctant to shoot. Yet at the same time, she can't put down her rifle because if the impenetrable control servers detect her disobeying the outer circle, the explosion rigged within her head will go off, like it did to the agent in the first issue. But, that, but that's when Steve asks her to trust him, and on a gut feeling, the soldier believes in Captain America. And once she does that, once her weapon is lowered, she finds herself still breathing. And yeah, her being hyped is definitely an understatement. But that's when Steve tells her that the Redacted is to thank, because without this thing, the servers would still be up. Therefore, Redacted deserves MVP for this battle, because all the Outer Circle soldiers are now free. With that, Steve and Bucky rush to the main star, which they find abandoned, 
except it's not because it's where they find the revolution who intentionally stayed behind. Now it's here where the baddie gives them a round of applause while also welcoming Bucky before letting them know that the rest of the outer circle had left for the ground after their speech, taking advantage of the distraction that was being caused by the battle. However, he remarks that between him and Bucky, he's the only member that matters and that he's been waiting for so long to have this conversation because the revolution introduces himself as the man that Bucky has been unknowingly been working for as a pawn for his entire life. Basically, the revolution has been the puppeteer behind Bucky's life. Now, clearly this is mentally messing up with Bucky and it's quite obvious that he's just, I mean, he just wants to kill this guy. But let's face it, being a Winter Soldier sucks. So for Bucky, he can't help but not think about all the innocent people and just people in general that he was forced to kill. And that's when Bucky steps up as he prepares to murder the revolution. But Steve tries to convince him that he shouldn't play into this twisted game. However, on the side, the revolution, who's being an asshole, still, makes it clear to Bucky that he doesn't have a choice. And he knows it because he has substantial experience playing at the game board. But what he doesn't know is that he can actually sit at the table and all that he has to do is actually what he initially came here to do. Kill the revolution and take his place in the outer circle. Now Steve's trying his best to dispute and to prevent further blood from being shed. But Bucky tells his best friend to basically fuck off. And he lets our hero know that this moment is everything that he's been thinking of for a very, very long time. Because way back in Devil's Reign, ever since Bucky read his file and discovered that the Outer Circle picked him when he was just a kid, you know, setting up his father to die and for him to be adopted by the army, just so he could kill them alongside their intended weapon, Captain America, it turns out that Bucky's role was to control Steve Rogers. But seeing how that didn't work out, the Outer Circle then pulled the strings to turn Bucky into the Winter Soldier, which left him a past covered in blood and sins that he can never wash away. And with Bucky taking aim at the revolution, Steve immediately steps in front of his gun, telling his best friend that he's not going to just gonna let him pull the trigger. But Bucky is adamant and is telling Steve to get the hell out of his way. But once more, Steve refuses. Therefore, seeing that there's no other way, Bucky takes the shot. Legit, Bucky Barnes straight up shoots Steve in order for the bullet to penetrate and to hit the revolution. Thus, we watch as both bodies hit the floor. And that, folks, was the end of Captain America. Sentinel of Liberty, issue number five. And thank you guys for checking out my video as it truly, truly means the world to me. So yeah, this issue was fine. You know, seeing Cap and Bucky teaming up is never a dull moment. And seeing how much Bucky was so intent for revenge, you know, it does have me worried a bit simply because I like when Steve and Bucky are friends. But you know, as the saying goes, one must infuse drama. My only gripe is the cliche of having to change a character's history without actually changing anything at all. In the comic, we learned that the revolution was the puppeteer behind Bucky's life. Every action, every decision that Bucky made was because of this guy. Me personally, I hate when writers do that because it takes away their agency. And when you have long-term characters like Cap and Bucky, it sort of takes all the adventures that they had and says, no, rather this was part of the plan all along. And again, I don't mean to shit on this guy, but the same thing happened with Bendis' Superman. Yeah, <laughs> Bendis is coming. Rather than Krypton exploding on, on its own terms, the quote, real reason was freaking Rogelzar. Again, when you put aside mythos and take away agency, that can really leave a sour taste in one's mouth. But yeah, as always, I'm your majestic sayer of words, Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button. And also the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload. And so you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number six? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace. Giggity goo.